This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, come on, say it with me. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. If you realize and you recognize this is the day that the Lord has made. Good afternoon to all of you out there in Radio Land, YouTube Land, Facebook Land, Prayer Line Land, wherever you are across this nation, this world, and this country. It is a blessing to be in worship with you one more time. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm so excited to be with you yet one more time. Amen. Don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Come on. Uh, in fact, I don't know what the very next second is going to bring. So, so I'm just excited to be with you right now. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I bless the name of the Lord for those who are on time today for worship. Brother Cliff Davis, big brother, bless you, man. Amen. All of you by way of Facebook, all of you by way of prayer line. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to be in the service one more time. Amen. Are you glad to be in the service? Glad to be in the service. Say it with me. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service. One more time. Hold up that number one. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. I am glad, glad to be in the, come on, put your hand again. Mm -hmm. Glad to be in the service. Mm -hmm. Glad to be in the service one more time. To let me live, I could have died in my sleep. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service. Mm. I'm glad to be in the service. Come on, let's go home. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Come on, clap your hand. Sister Vicki Patterson, clap your hand. Woman of God, give God praise. Everybody give God the praise. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I am so very <clears throat> excited to be in the house. Amen. So very excited to be in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I would not want to be anywhere else than where I am right now. Amen. Come on, let's bow our heads for prayer. Close our eyes and lift our hearts to the throne of God. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you, we love you, we praise you. We extol you, God. We lift you up. You're worthy of all the praise. God, we come just to say thank you. We don't come, Lord, for any shape, form, neither fashion. We don't come to impress anybody, but Lord, we come that we might seek your face and seek your voice. Oh, most Heavenly Father, we pray for your presence now, that you would be with us, that you would lead, guide, and direct in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for every person under the sound of my voice. We lift up this nation, this world, and this country. We lift up families and homes and marriages and children, I pray. We lift up our school-aged children, God, our school systems, our superintendents and school boards across the nation, dear God. Lead them, I pray. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up the White House, oh God. We lift up this election before you, God, that you might take full control in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do at this hour. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, come on, let the church say amen. That was our 60-second national prayer call, amen. But don't hang up, don't walk out to church. Those who are on the prayer line, I know that you are accustomed uh, on every day, seven days a week we pray at 12 noon. I need everybody to know this. Every day since the month of March, <clears throat> we've been praying 62nd National Prayer Call on the prayer line. We don't do that on Facebook. Amen. That's on the prayer line. So it's very important, people of God, that you become connected, uh, amen, to the prayer line. Uh, this is a prayer ministry uh, that just so happened to have a prayer line. <laughs> Y'all will catch that tomorrow. Don't miss that. Don't, oh my God, let me say again. This is a prayer ministry that just so happened, amen, has a prayer line. Come on. Amen. It's a prayer. Amen. This prayer ministry would still be a prayer ministry even if it were not for the prayer line. Are y'all with me? Oh, I'm getting excited. Oh, my God. God is so good. Amen. Bless the Lord. You got to get that number. Lock it in your phone so you can call in every day at 12 noon Central Time across this nation. We have uh, so many people calling in, 80 to 90 people daily. And those of you that are on the prayer line right now, uh, you, uh, you know by now, on Wednesdays, we don't just walk out. Amen. After the 62nd National Prayer Call, we stay in the church. We remain in the building for our Worshiping Wednesday, um, witnessing, uh, amen, Wednesday worship service. Praise God. So we are engaged in that right now. In case you're wondering, amen, we're in the midst of it right now. Praise God. Amen. We're live in living color as we always are. Always live in living color, streaming live across this nation, this world, and this country. I'll prove it to you that we're live. Today's date is Wednesday, October 28th. Yes, 2020. We are live. You never receive a tape delay, neither a pre recorded broadcast. Uh, praise God. The only time you get pre recorded when you go to YouTube. Amen. <laughs> you and you go back, and you go back to Facebook. After uh, the live broadcast has ended, of course, and you want to replay that, amen, and be blessed all over again, then, then now you are in the midst of a pre-recorded broadcast. But uh, we're always live and in living color. Simply the word church. A church without walls. Woo! A global community of prayer warriors. And we are making a mighty impact on this whole wide world. Nation. We have prayer warriors all over the nation. Amen. And we're going to continue to, we're going to stay right here where we are. Uh, amen. The pandemic didn't slow us down. Mm -mm, no. Matter of fact, the pandemic speeded us up. Hello. Yeah. Mm. Pandemic speed up. A lot of folks, amen. That's, see, that's the world system. In the world system, the pandemic slowed that down, didn't it? Pandemic shut the school down. Come on. Shut jobs down. Hello, somebody. Amen. Shut businesses down. Pandemic did that. But the pandemic put fuel to the fire for the church. Hello. Come on. Oh, the pandemic put fuel to the fire. I'm talking about the church now. <laughs> Why? Because this is the church that Jesus built. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said to Peter, Now that thou art named, your name is now Peter upon this rock. Y'all remember that when he changed his name to Peter, from Simon to Peter? Amen. He said, Now your name is Peter. And the name Peter means rock. Look it up. My God. He said, Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Let me go on with the lesson. Mm. And the gates of hell shall not Prevail against it. That word prevail means have victory. Okay, nothing and nobody have victory over the church. I want you to get that now. 
Good to see you, Brother Fred Wade. Good to see you, man. Always a blessing to see you in the house. Always a blessing. Amen. Amen. Lady King is in the house. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Linda Ward, woman of God. Amen. Uh, preacher woman. <laughs> God bless you. My cousin. Amen. Love you in the Lord. Amen. Love you in the Lord. Um, we're getting ready to go into the lesson. Uh, you all, we are in the midst of an awesome series. We started on yesterday, began a series, a new series of sorts, entitled Living a Surrendered Life. We talked about that. We talked, we spoke extensively during part one on yesterday about living a surrendered life. Not just living a life, but living a surrendered life. We identified, we, we, we talked about the word surrender, which comes from, uh, amen, the word, the word surrendered comes from the root word surrender. We talked about that, the word surrender, um, it means to give up everything. It means to give up something, to give it up, to, to let it go, to release it. Amen. When you surrender something, you give it up. And so we must, as believers, we must understand. And I know you've already walked down the aisle. You're giving your hand to the preacher. You're giving your heart to God. But are you living a surrendered life? Hello? You can't hear nobody. It's quiet in the house. That's two different things. I know you've already walked down the aisle. I know. I know you're giving your heart to God. Come on. I know. I know you hold position in the church. I know. <laughs> I know you're the most important person in the church. I know the church can't function without you. <laughs> I know I know that if you don't show up on Sunday, they can't have worship. Come on. Woo. I know that. <laughs> I know the meeting can't start without you. I know. You're important. But are you living a surrender life? <laughs> Y'all ain't going to shout on that. Let me use myself. I know I'm the pastor of the church, but am I living a surrendered life? It's a good question. Good question. Are you living a surrendered life? Our foundational passage of scripture, Luke 22, we offered it on yesterday. It um, drops us down uh, right in the midst of the scene Jesus and his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is uh, about to be taken into custody by the Roman soldiers. Um, he had come out this particular night with his disciples and he said unto them, you guys stay right here, I'm going over there. And the Bible says he went away from them, about a stone's cast away from them, a stone's cast distance. Uh, amen. And he fell down on his knees and he began to talk to God. Come on. Amen. He said, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Uh, nevertheless, uh, not my will, but his dying will be done. Come on. Jesus, in essence, was saying unto the Father, I'm ready to give it up. I'm ready to surrender everything for the sake of the mission that you have placed me on. I want to bring out something. Uh, I want to, this is part two of our lesson. Amen. And um, uh, praise God. And I, you know, I gave you all an assignment. I gave us an assignment on yesterday morning. Uh, if you was in worship, you know uh, that that amen that. Uh, we received an assignment. Our assignment was uh, to write down every area of our life. Amen. And uh, to write it down. Come on, somebody. To take inventory from Galatians 5. Remember, we talked about that yesterday morning. Galatians 5. Uh, amen. All of those uh, categories of worldliness. Whew. Oh, have mercy. Mm. 
write them down, and, um, and you'll be able to discover some things about yourself. Amen? And uh, it's just for you and God, praise the Lord, to look at and to pray about it. Amen? And certainly you will be able to discover at least one area, at least one area where that you perhaps have not surrendered fully unto the Lord. Right? Okay? It's all of us. We, all of us. God, I know y'all so holy. There's some folk. There's some folk that are holier than thou, aren't they? Tell the truth. It's just me and you talking. We ain't gonna tell nobody. It's a, you ain't gotta call no name. But be honest. There's some folk in the world. There's some folk in our lives. Some folk you know. At least one, or two people that, that that feel like they're holier than thou. Right? Feel amen. They carry themselves like they just a cut above the rest. Come on. Amen. Come on, somebody. But I got news for them. Mm. The Roman writer said, all have sinned. Woo! Lord have mercy. I believe that's 3 and 23. And have come short of the glory of God. That's right, Sister Free, to get your husband in the house, in the church. <laughs> I see I see your Sister Free, the Kate Coleman Smith Hawk, tagging your husband. That's right. Tagging. Good God Almighty. <laughs> That's a wife there, y'all. <laughs> Amen. She don't want to grow by herself. Maybe she wants them to grow together. Come on, help me. Lord, I have mercy. Let me go on with the lesson. Amen. I want to bring this out. Luke 22, verse 40. And the A portion. This is something God dropped on me this morning as I was studying the lesson, preparing for part two, which is what we are now. We're in part two. I'm preparing for this this morning. And, and I looked at, oh my God. The Holy Spirit dropped on me uh, so heavy. Luke 22, verse 40. Now, we read this on yesterday, but the A portion is what I want to look at. The A portion of verse 40. And when he was at the place. All right. And when he was at the place. That's Jesus. It's he. That word he means Jesus. Amen. Um, and when he was at the place. What that signifies is when Jesus had reached the place of surrender. All right? I want you to get that. Jesus had reached the place of surrender. Now, I want you to catch something else along with that. Not only has he, had he reached the place of physical surrender, but he had also uh, you know, the demographically he was in the right place and physically he was in the right place, but spiritually he was in the right place. Most of all, spiritually. Watch this, y'all. If we're going to fully surrender to God, uh, amen, uh, we must surrender first in a spiritual way. God is a spirit. We that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now that's John 4 and 24, if you want to check me on that one. John 4 and 24. God is a spirit. God is not flesh as we are. The only time God was flesh is when he sent his son down. Come on. Into the world. Jesus the Christ. Jesus was God in the flesh. Are you with me? Although he was also God in the spirit. Yeah. Oh my God. Ah. So, 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 so Luke 22 verse 40. The A portion uh, represents the fact that you got to see it. You got to see that because uh, the enemy don't want you to see this. The enemy don't want you to see. The devil wants you to only think of, of this portion of scripture in a physical or demographical way. But. It is Jesus uh, arriving at the place of surrender spiritually. Amen. That is the greatest form of surrender spiritually. Come on, talk to me. Because it does not matter what happened in other areas, but you, if, you're not, if you've not surrendered spiritually, then you have not surrendered fully and completely. Amen. And so, uh, I want to offer this. We offered um, the first major bullet point on yesterday in which it was a surrendered life.
begins at salvation. We offered that on yesterday toward the end of our lesson. And I pray that you wrote that down. I pray. I pray that you wrote. If you didn't write it down yesterday, or perhaps you were not in worship yesterday morning, amen, 8.15 a.m. Central Standard Time, write it down now. Write that down. A surrendered life begins at salvation, at the point of accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's when the surrendered life actually begins, right there. It doesn't end there. It begins there. Amen? Now I want to offer the second bullet point here for our lesson, brothers and sisters. Full surrender is God's perfect will for our lives. Full surrender. Somebody say, look at your neighbor, say not half surrender, neighbor. The full surrender, God's perfect will for the life of everybody is that we fully surrender unto him. That's God's perfect will for the life of everybody is that we would fully surrender everything unto him. And y'all who were here yesterday and the Holy Spirit dropped on us a verse of a song, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to be my blessed Savior I <laughs> now, there ain't no sin to sing that song if you have not surrendered all. If you ain't ready to surrender everything, don't sing that song. <laughs> Let everybody else sing it. <laughs> and I can understand why some of y'all didn't sing it. Come on. Because if you ain't ready to surrender all, don't sing the song. Come on. Amen. Amen. You got to listen. You got to surrender everything. You got to surrender your money. Uh-oh, folk getting up. I see you. Sit back down. Don't walk out this church. <laughs> Amen. There you go. Oh, come on. Don't walk and sit down. Sit down. You got to surrender your money. Everything. You got to surrender. Yeah. Amen. Come on. You got to surrender your family. Hello, somebody. Y'all running around here trying to figure out all this stuff about your family and why they won't go to church and why they won't pay tithes and why they won't pray and why they won't do right. Why they... Turn it over. Amen. Turn it over. Turn it over to Jesus. He'll work it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus can work it out if you let him. Come on. I know Jesus, he can work it out if you let him, mm -hmm. that problem that I had, <laughs> Woo! yeah, I turned it over to Jesus and he worked it out, oh yeah, <laughs> amen, hallelujah, bless his name, turn it over, you got to surrender everything your health turn over to God go to the doctor get a bad report you know all that you're concerned about it the doctor said well you know I see something right here you know how they show it to you they bring the little x-ray thing out there show it to you I see something right here um, I know you don't have pain in this area but I see this I see it right here I don't know what it is, I'm going to send it out, um, uh, biopsy, what it, what all them, you know, the medical term. Amen. Come on, Lady King, help me. It's the medical term. <laughs> send it out, the biopsy. Amen. Get an x-ray, get further testing. Come on. Amen. So we can know what we're dealing with. Doctor will tell you that sometime. Got to be ready. So we know what we're dealing with. We don't want to mess with it until we know what it is. Okay? All right? Amen. You got to turn that over. You work it out. You got to turn it over. Come on. You got to turn that over.
problems at home, problems in your marriage, problems with children. Turn it over. Woo! Surrender. Come on. Mm, that's what Jesus did in the text. Jesus said, hey, my will is yours. Whatever you want me to do, Father, I'm ready. Hallelujah. I'm ready. Amen. And so God's perfect will is that we fully surrender everything over to him. Amen. That's his perfect will for our lives. All right. And um, let me say this. I don't want to paint the picture that like it's so easy because it's not. It's a challenge, all right? It's a, it's a, it's a great challenge. Uh, Brother Sylvester Hogg, good to see you, man. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a great challenge to, to turn it over. It's a great challenge, amen, uh, to surrender. It's not always easy. It's not. I don't speak from experience now. Come on. The enemy will whisper in your ear and say, no, you don't, don't give. The enemy will tell you, give this up, but not that. Huh? You've been there? Come on. You've been there. Come on. Don't look at me funny. You've been there. You can give this up, but not that. Come on. You got to hold on to that. <laughs> Come on. Amen. But but you have to you have to do it if you want to please God. If you really want to please God, I'm talking about really now. I'm not talking about that, that fake stuff. That, you know, that wishy-washy stuff, you know. Some folk just want to appear to be pleasing to God. Appear to make it look like, come on, to people. Amen. You know how you know how some folk, you know how some folk act one way on Sunday, just because it's Sunday, you know. And then you mess around and catch them on a Tuesday evening round. And, 245, ain't no telling where they're going to be, no telling what they're going to be doing. Come on, talk to me. I'm talking about real surrender here. I'm talking about, I'm talking about real. I'm talking about full surrender unto the Father. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, it's not easy, uh, but it's possible. We can do it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, we can do it. Come on. Do you know how hard it was? It, it, it was hard for Jesus, but yet it was easy. He was committed to God. He was committed to pleasing the Father. He was committed, uh, amen, to doing that which uh, was necessary, amen, to please him. Talk about it yesterday. Touch on yesterday how uh, that when Jesus was baptized uh, by John the Baptist, and and um, and as he came up out of the water, a voice from heaven spoke. Come on, it was the voice of God, and and God said, "This is my Son, of whom I'm well pleased." Y'all with me? It's all about pleasing God. See, the enemy would have us to please ourselves. Come on. Yes, yes, he would. He wants us to please ourselves. But, but if we're going to live a surrendered life, we must be committed to pleasing the Father. I don't care what nobody else say now. So you can't be concerned about them, you know, all of them over there. You got, you got to please God. Amen. And so what he's asking us uh, is to personally relinquish everything. It is a conviction, amen, um, by God. God has to fully convict you. You got to be convicted in the spirit. Amen. You ever seen somebody say, well, um, you ever seen somebody, uh, and they'll do it in church sometimes. They'll walk down the aisle and they'll testify, you know, testify and they say, well, you know, the Lord has delivered me from drugs. The Lord has delivered me uh, from, from alcoholism. Or what have you. I'm just using those for an example. I'm not saying those are any worse or better than any other. But I'm just using those. Uh, the Lord have delivered me from this or that. And then two days later. Um, you, you know you creep up on them. They don't see you coming. And they got a bottle of wine in their hand. A bottle of whiskey or whatever. 
and they just they just said two days ago they had been they had been uh, delivered by God, but watch this here. They had not been convicted. That's the, that's the thing. You, amen. That's why they have not been able to fully surrender. Because conviction has not taken place. Amen. Praise God. And it could be anything. It could be a bad attitude, bad habit. Some bad habits that we have, a bad attitude. Uh, got a lot of folk with bad attitude. <laughs> Don't let me stop talking about that. <laughs> got a lot of Christians. Got a lot of Christians with bad attitudes. I know some. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm just teaching the lesson. If you don't mind me, I'm teaching the lesson. Amen. Um, but I can say this. I don't have a bad attitude. I can say that. Oh, I can say that. I got my mama in me. I believe my mama. My mama speak to everybody. <laughs> Always have. Uh, you know. And I can see that. I look back on that now. I say, my God, I want to speak to everybody, folks. You're hey, baby. <laughs> you know. Hey, man, come on. She ain't got to know him. How you doing, sugar? Come on. Then you got to have a good attitude. Not saying she perfect either. Come on, somebody. Some folks just have bad attitude. They have not fully surrendered themselves. Hey, Amen. You must, you must fully surrender. Me too. I'm not just telling you. The lesson is for me too. Amen. The lesson is for me too. The lesson is for all of us. Amen. And, and, and I'm teaching to myself first. Come on. I'm teaching to myself first. Amen. Praise. You just in the you just happen to be in the room with me. <laughs> Come on. I'm talking. Watch this here. To make you feel better, let me put it like this. I'm talking to me. But you just happen to be in the room with me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hey! Woo! Uh, it's about to get hot in here now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to offer the third bullet point, third major bullet point to us today. Keep in mind now, I want you to be good note takers. Write that down. Write that down. Uh, two of the most... The, 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 two, the two things you're going to hear me do, uh, uh, simply the word, you've been in simply the word for, for any length of time, uh, uh, any considerable length of time now, you know, those that have been here for a while, they know um, the two, uh, amen, the, 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 the two most common things, frequent things that, uh, 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 praise God, that, that you'll hear me say in this church, in this church, amen. Number one, don't get mad with me. And number two, write it down. Come on. Those two things. You're going to hear that? You're going to hear that more than in. <laughs> Don't get mad with me and write it down. So I'm going to say it again. Write it down. Amen. Number one, we, now we got this on yesterday. I pray you wrote this down. A surrendered life begins at salvation. Okay, that's number, major, number one bullet point in this lesson. A surrendered life begins at salvation. We've spoken extensively about that. I, I pray you got that. I pray you got that. The number two major bullet point for surrender is God's perfect will for our lives. I pray you wrote that down. Okay? Now, number three, watch this. Jesus Christ is the perfect example of full surrender. What Jesus did in Luke 22 Starting around when you know when, they get, when I, a whole lot a whole lot happened in chapter twenty two. Now I'm not talking about, but I'm speaking up specifically what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. Luke twenty two, beginning around verse thirty nine, thirty nine through forty two. What Jesus did in that amount of time, in those three four verses or whatever it is, is the perfect example. Of full surrender. I mean, you can't surrender no better than that. Here it is, the man getting ready to die. Do y'all hear me? Let's just say it like this. The man, get, God want him to die. He has to die. 
as a propitiation of our sins. He has to bore or bear all sins of the world on his shoulders. He has to do it. That's God's plan for him. So he goes to God in the last pitch effort and says, God, Father, if it be thy will, remove the cup. Amen. He said, remove it from me. He make it personal. If it's your will, remove it from me. But he said, it ain't about me. It's all about you and what you want to do with me. He fully surrendered. Jesus Christ always did the will of the Father. Always. Check the record. Check the record. Jesus the Christ always did the will of the Father. But, but yet toward the end of his life, uh, of his earthly life, he, he, he struggled, just for a moment, he struggled to surrender in the Garden of Gethsemane. Just for a moment. Just for a split second. Now, if you're a deep theologian, you might, you know, argue the point. You can, you know, uh, I ain't got time to argue with you, but <laughs> you can argue that if you want to. <laughs> argue with somebody else. I'm just, I'm just teaching the lesson. Amen. Just for a moment, he did struggle to surrender completely to the Father. But it, it only lasted just for a split second. Amen. Because in the same verse, literally he says, Nevertheless, not my will, thine will be done. He did not allow the enemy to creep in any longer. See, so when you give the devil time, he'll take over. Whoa! Give him time and space, he'll take over. Write that down. Write it down. When you give the enemy time and space, he will take full control. Write that down. All right, Facebook people, I want you to listen. Tag me on it, quote me on it. Amen. Uh, after the lesson, don't do it now because you're on live. <laughs> if you give the enemy time and space, make sure the quote is right. If you give the enemy, if you, if, if, if you give the enemy time and space, he will take full control of your life. I know I'm right about it now. I got scripture to back me up. The thief coming not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and have it more. Abundantly. So, as Jesus withdrew from his disciples, he prayed that prayer. He said, Father, that was actually a prayer. Now he talked about anytime you talk to God, you in prayer. Oh, have mercy. Ah, oh, man. I want y'all to get that. Anytime we talk to the Father, we are in prayer. It's a prayer. You ain't, you ain't got to be always asking for something, uh, you know, to, to pray. Any, any conversation you have with God is a prayer. Come on. And God does not want us to always come to him uh, requesting stuff. Some folk don't. I believe that. I, I'm not God, but I believe it. That's, my, that's the way I feel. You can't change my opinion. <laughs> I believe that some folk only pray, only go to God when they need something. I believe that. I've, I've heard prayers prayed that way. And after that prayer is over and we say amen, I'm saying to myself, your whole prayer consisted of you asking God. You ain't never telling him thank you for what he's already done. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not saying don't ask him for what you want because Paul said to the church at Philippi, make your request known to God through prayer and supplication. Amen. Hey, come on, we are instructed by the word of God to go to God. Amen. But but my God, I, you never thought 
You never thanked him for what he done yesterday and this morning. Come on. Woo. Hallelujah. Jesus knew that um, he had come to die for the sins of the world. Jesus knew that. Jesus, Jesus was well aware. Of course, Jesus was God um, in the flesh. He was actually God walking the earth. Okay. Um, he knew what his mission and his mandate consisted of. He knew that the plan of God was for him to die for the sins of all mankind. And uh, by him being fully God, he was able to foresee all that awaited him as he suffered on the cross. Amen. Um, and, and bore the punishment for our sins. Jesus was able to foresee, that means to see in the future, by him being God. He knew what, his, what was waiting on him. He knew what his reward was. He knew that in spite of the suffering, that the reward would be greater than what he suffered. And see, that's the kind of life we need to live. We need to, listen, I know we have to go through stuff, just like you look at this pandemic, this global pandemic, coronavirus, COVID-19, all right? We look at racism, we look at um, uh, the political arena uh, right now, you know, what, six days away? Have y'all voted? <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> I said that yesterday. I hope y'all didn't get mad with me. I hope nobody got mad. You had 11, I believe in Texas, Texas, uh, they go, I think it's Texas, they go through Friday, early voting. I, I think I saw that somewhere, the 30th. I think I saw that somewhere. I didn't know that. I thought it was through the 27th for everybody. But uh, I, think, I think I saw this morning somewhere uh, that um, it goes through the 30th for Texas, I believe. Y'all help me out, Brother Cliff Davis. Y'all in Texas. Brother Cliff and Brother Oscar. Sister Frida. Uh, Brother Sylvester. Uh, Brother Fred Whaley. Amen. Sister Sharon Davis, she probably at work. Amen. Brother Cliff, yeah, Brother Cliff say yeah. See that, Brother Cliff say yeah. Say, say go through the 30th, right? So it's no... It, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, y'all. I'm trying... There's no excuses in not early voting. Now, we talk about voting, yeah. We talk about voting, yeah. There's no excuse in not voting. Yes, that's true. No excuse for that. But really, there's no excuse for, for not early vote. Why Why you can't early vote? Now, I'm, 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 give me, let's talk about this for <laughs> Let's talk about this for a minute. And so many millions of people have already. Amen. Records have been broken. You know, and all that. Uh, way, it's way up in the millions now. Way up there. I, I lost track. I used to keep up with it. Lord, the man, hey, man, look. Folk are voting. People are voting, man. Hey, man. And everybody ain't voting for Biden. Everybody ain't voting for, uh, for Trump. Folk are voting. Some voting for Biden. Some vote for Trump. Folk are voting. Hello, somebody. Join us. Amen. Amen. And I, you know, and, I, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Shame on you. Come on. Y'all remember I told y'all yesterday, and I couldn't believe that. When I saw, they say Shaquille O'Neal, he admitted it. He said he'd never voted in his life. Shaquille O'Neal, the Shaquille O'Neal, had never voted until this election. Prior to this election, he's never voted. Can you imagine how many other people have never voted? Amen. For whatever reason, you know, I guess they feel like, a lot of people feel like their vote don't count. If ain't nobody on the ballot for me, uh, I don't like none of them. So, I mean, <laughs> amen. Come on. Listen, y'all. Amen. But we're still in the lesson. We're still in the lesson. Jesus was able to foresee that his reward was much greater. Amen. That is suffering. And that's what we need to do. 
as we surrender, uh, because the devil, it ain't going to be easy. The enemy is going to try to prevent you from doing it, but, but you have to maintain that spiritual mentality of, of knowing, remind yourself that, amen, that, that what lies ahead for me, I know, I know, I know I got to go through, I know I got to suffer, amen, but, but, because watch this, write this down, there is suffering in the surrender, write it down. There's great suffering in your surrender. Yes, it is. Great suffering. Great suffering. Amen. Write it down. I know it's just coming from Buck King. I know I ain't nobody, but write it down anyway. <laughs> Amen. Write it down. Hello, somebody. There's great suffering in the midst of your surrender. But think about your reward. God has promised you great reward. Amen. That's great reward if you would just go on and surrender. Praise God. Just give it up. Give it up. Amen. Just, 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 just give it up. You, th you know, you think about, um, um, here's a good example, those that are trying to lose weight. Okay. And I'm not, I don't know who is and who's not, so uh, you gotta be kind of careful when you th start talking about this, especially this topic, because people people take it the wrong way. He talking about me. No, I'm just talking I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, you know. It's just you, for example, those that try to lose weight, it's not easy giving up certain foods. You know? Um, I mean, <laughs> certain foods just taste good. <laughs> you don't want to give them up. Come on. The doctor tell you you got to give up fried chicken, and you <laughs> and you love fried chicken, man. You gonna say, man, you gonna look at that, look at that doctor like he crazy, man. You crazy. You might not tell him that, but in your mind you say, man, you crazy. I ain't giving up no fried chicken. You out of your mind. I've been eating, been eating fried chicken all my life. I'm not even, I'm not giving up. But if you want to live, you better. <clears throat> come on. <clears throat> if you want to get that blood pressure down, come on. And lose 30 pounds like he told you. He said, baby, you got to lose. Ma'am, you got to lose 30 pounds. You got to lose 30 pounds. By the next time you come in here, I want to see you down by 30. And that's in, he might give you 60 days. I say two months. Uh, schedule the next visit for two months down the line. And say, when you come back in here, you got to be down by 30. Because we, and, and I guarantee you, we're going to get that blood pressure under control. We're going to get this diabetes under control. We're going to get the cholesterol under control. We're going to do it. But you have a responsibility. You got to give up certain foods. Man, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. Hey, tell your neighbor it's not easy. But it's possible. It's, it's very possible. You got to trust in God. You got to do the right thing. Amen. Hey, come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise it. You got to be consistent. See, in the midst of surrender, you got to understand this, that there, there is an element or, or say a component that is a very huge component in the midst of surrender called consistency. All right? There's, there's great commitment and there's great consistency. God desires commitment and consistency. Write that down. That wasn't even a part of my notes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God desires commitment. First of all, commitment. You, if you're going to surrender, you got to make a commitment. You can't go to the list. You know, you, 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 you've been doing good all week. And then, you know, the devil is so crafty, man. That joke. Oh, Lord have mercy. That joke is something, man. <laughs> you've been doing good all week. And you're feeling good about yourself. And then you're invited to the party. Are you invited to the wedding? You go to the reception, and what they serve? Fried chicken. <laughs> huh? And you hungry, right? What you gonna find yourself doing if you're weak now? You fall into your weak moment, you're gonna find yourself eating that fried chicken. But the man just told you last week at the visit, <laughs> you can't eat none. He ain't say one piece. He ain't say you can eat one oh, I'm I know I'm helping somebody. Y'all ain't gonna admit it. In your mind, the devil said, just one bite won't. Come on, y'all. 
Just one bite won't hurt. Just one, just one leg. Just one thigh. Come on, talk to me. But that ain't what the doctor say. The doctor say don't eat none. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. If you let me, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you if you let me. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, my, my thing is, uh, I, ain't, I ain't so crazy about chicken. I, I love fish. Amen. Baked fish, fried fish, whatever. It don't I love fish. Amen. I do. Amen. 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 My uncle always teased me. <clears throat> my uncle, our uncle, his name is Richard, uh, my dad's brother, uh, Richard King. He's a deacon um, at local church. And, uh, <laughs> Y'all, every time he see me, <laughs> he asks me, do I have some chicken? Because <laughs> it's just a common thing. Uh, everybody think that, that, that preachers love fried chicken. But, but <laughs> and I keep telling him, I said, I said, man, I love fish. I eat a little chicken. Come on, somebody. Amen, brother. <laughs> Amen. Bless the, that's just the way we have fun with one another. I don't get mad when he say that because that's the way he and I have fun. We want to know. You got to enjoy life. Stop taking things personal all the time. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And just laugh it off and just keep on going. Amen. You'll feel better. I promise you. I promise you that you will. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. So by virtue of the fact that Jesus, what time is it? We, our time getting short. We're about to close out. By virtue of the fact uh, that Jesus was able to foresee uh, everything that awaited him as he suffered on the cross and bore the, uh, the sins of the world on his shoulder through the punishment um, he was able to make a commitment and he was able to be consistent in the things of God right and his distress demonstrated that surrender is not always easy amen surrender sometimes involves excruciating pain. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It, you know, doctor, you say, well, not only do you need to um, uh, change your eating habits, but you need to exercise uh, three to four times a week for 30 minutes. Amen. And you got to push on through that. You got to do that. Amen. You got to be consistent with that. Come on, somebody. Amen. But Jesus never wavered um, from his complete obedience to the Father's will. He never did. And that's what, what is required of us, brothers and sisters. There was no other way to accomplish the salvation of mankind. The only way to do it was for him to die on the cross. So he knew that. And he was willing to endure the suffering for the purpose of uh, satisfying the will of the Father. And so therefore Jesus offered himself fully to the Father. And he bore the penalty for all of our sins. And, and, uh, and uh, he was, I mean, he's the greatest example. Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, is the greatest example um, of us, uh, of someone surrendering fully uh, and living a surrendered life. Amen. Amen. Clap your hand. Give God praise, everybody. Come on, clap your hands and bless the name of the Lord. We're going to cut it off there so we can leave a few minutes. Uh, for uh, for announcements and to lift the offering, uh, lift our offering, brothers and sisters. Uh, the Lord lay on your heart to give. Uh, we have various ways of giving. Um, uh, Cash App is, uh, believe it or not, our most common way. <laughs> People have really, really, really um, taken to that to that piece of it, you know, because it's quick. It's safe. It's secure. It's very fast. You can you can do a cash app in three four seconds. It's done. You know. And so um, we have not experienced any issues with it at all over the many years we've been using cash app. STW Ministry is our cash app. STW Ministry. Mr. Carolyn is our administrator, and she has it there up on the screen. All of the information is there for you, brothers and sisters. PO Box one six six. DS Louisiana 70727 and uh, also we offer online giving which um, 
not many people. Uh, we used to have a lot of activity there, but um, not much now. But it's still there for you. It's still available. If you don't have Cash App, you don't want to mail it in, you can go online to the website and give there. STWM.webs.com. STWM.web.com. Now, get that out of the way. That's very important. Giving is so, so very important. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, check it, read it, study it, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, study Malachi chapter 3, and so many other places uh, that deal with giving. Uh, praise God, sowing into the kingdom. God is going to bless you real, real good. Remain consistent. Remain consistent, amen, uh, in your giving. I tell people this, even during the pandemic, amen, because you think about it, even during the pandemic, you and I have continued to do what we wanted to do. Oh, yeah. Well, if we wanted to do it, we did it. Pandemic didn't stop us. Come on. So why should it stop you from giving? Hello, somebody. Amen. I got to say that with a smile because some folk are getting mad with you when you talk about giving, boy. Oh, my God. Yeah, whole grudge is on you for that one. Amen. So we love you in the Lord today. We're getting ready to let you go. Now, Wednesdays. Um, of course, we know it's a busy, busy, busy day. We'll be back at 6.15 today on the prayer line and on Facebook, but not on this Facebook page. We'll be on the local Facebook, local church Facebook page, um, uh, Hickory Grove and McEwen Church page locally uh, uh, that, uh, on Facebook and on the prayer line, okay? And on the prayer line today, 6.15 to 7.15 um, on today. Amen. So we're looking for you to meet us there. Meet us in the church today. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, we will uh, do things a little bit different. Next Wednesday, we're going to have a guest preacher blessing us with the word next Wednesday evening. I say today, next Wednesday evening, uh, and we'll begin at 630 not 6.15. We'll begin at 6.30. We're going to be blessed. Uh, we're going to be blessed by um, Dr. J.J. Mitchell, our friend and our brother, uh, will be with us. He's very supportive of what we do. In fact, I support him. He supports me. Uh, dear brother, a brother beloved, and certainly uh, we want to give him opportunity to teach, preach, uh, do whatever the Lord lead him to do. On next Wednesday, next, and we shall begin, God willing, at 6.30, not 6.15, next Wednesday, 6.30, all right, 6.30, all right, amen. So we want everybody to meet us, and we'll be talking about it between now and then, and keep you reminded, keep you abreast of what's going on, praise God, amen. Thank you so very much, we love all of you in the Lord, Jesus Y'all go on and make this the rest of this day a great day. <clears throat> uh, those of us, I say us, who are in the potential path of, um, what the name of this storm? Zeta? Is that it? <laughs> Boy, they come up with some stuff, don't they? <laughs> I think it's Zeta. Um, let us, let us, um, uh, let us be prepared. And uh, supposed to be some heavy rain and wind coming in. Uh, let us be prepared. Let us not be in the streets and roaming around um, aimlessly. <laughs> just out, you know, some folks just, 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 just out in the street. Just ain't going nowhere, you know. Just out there, amen. So let us be at home as much as we can and and uh, be safe and uh, be prepared, amen. Uh, supposed to hit. It's coming in. I think it's a Category 2 now, I believe. Last I checked. Amen. And so, um, so I just wanted to say that as well. Let us continue to pray for this nation, this world, and this country. Let us continue to lift up Brother Ennis Hollins and uh, Mother Chris uh, and, and others as well. Praise God. Let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we lift up. God, we lift up Brother Ennis Hollins now. We lift up Mother Christine. God, we lift up Brother Henry London in the name of Jesus. Dear God, you made them all and you know all about them. 
Father God, we pray now in the name of Jesus the Christ that you would look upon all the sick and afflicted across this nation, that you would heal, set free, and deliver. Like only you can, dear God. Father, we, we pray that you would heal those who are dealing with suffering from domestic violence, God, and, and Lord, though somebody perhaps have been diagnosed with breast cancer. But, oh God, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you would look upon them today. Oh, Father God, heal them, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. We know that there's power in your hand. One touch from you will make everything all right. God, we thank you. God, we love you. God, we praise you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. All right, brothers and sisters, we love you in the Lord. Nothing you can do. Um, and don't forget now, later today, 615, prayer line and Facebook later today. 615, meet us, meet us, meet us. Also, Friday morning, 815. All right? Prayer line, Facebook. Every Tuesday, every Friday, without fail. Amen. Every Wednesday, 12 high noon. Simply the word church. Amen. Has been in worship for 10 years, y'all. In a few months, we're going to celebrate big time. Amen. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Come on, somebody. Pandemic ain't going to stop us either. We're going to do it. Atlanta, Georgia, we're on the way. Atlanta, Georgia, you're on, you're on the clock, baby. <laughs> we're coming your way. Dallas, we're on the way. Hey, get, it, get ready, Dallas. Amen. We're on the way in Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. If you meet me and forget me, it's okay. But if you meet Jesus, and forget him, you've missed out on what? <laughs> A lifetime. <laughs> Face, Facebook, type it in. A lifetime. Some of y'all got it. Sister Carol said, A lifetime. Sister Vicky Palace. Brother Cliff, lifetime, lifetime, amen. You meet Jesus and forget him. You, that's what you missed out on because he came to give us eternal life. God bless you. I love you in the Lord. If you need me, call me 225-202-8431. God bless you.